the Allen Award certainly is the culmination of my long career in human genetics. I'm grateful to the American Society of Human Genetics and to the award committee for bestowing this honor on me. With previous recipients, including such well-known scientists as Newton Morton, Arno Motulski, and Robert Elston. It also feels good to be among my many friends in human genetics and to celebrate this award with them. Unfortunately, one of these friends cannot be here with us. Richard Spielman passed away earlier this year. We lost an excellent scientist, a great human being, and a good friend. Oh, okay. In this brief outline of my career, I would like to begin with my student years and then highlight major results of my research, concluding with my current work in China. In addition to discussing research work, I will point out the importance of good mentoring, but I will spare you any technical statistical details. As you may know, I was born in Switzerland the country of mountains and alphorns and watches, and I almost forgot of banks. <laughs> After gymnasium, which I attended in my hometown of Schaffhausen, shown here, I entered the University of Zurich, but I was unsure what to study. I always liked mathematics, but also many other things, some scientific and others not so scientific. Eventually, I decided on zoology, as I wanted to know more about life. After several years of field work on the cytogenetics of the common shrew, which I carried out in the French part of Switzerland, I finished up with a PhD degree. I was not a good student and was not interested in spending my life as a zoologist. By then, I had become more interested in math and statistics and entered the scientific computing center of a pharmaceutical company in Basel, J.R. Geike, now Novartis. However, I was not satisfied with applying statistical tests like recipes from a cookbook and went to the University of Washington to embark on a master's program in biomathematics designed for graduates holding a higher degree. Upon completion of my master's degree with a thesis on classification procedures, rather than returning to Basel as originally planned, I stayed on at the University of Washington as a postdoc, as Arno Motulski had invited me to join his division of medical genetics. I stayed in Arno's division for seven years, returned to Switzerland for a number of years, then joined Columbia University and later Rockefeller University. Now I would like, would like to highlight some of my work carried out at each of these places. In Seattle, Arno Motulski provided me with a generous work environment, while Joe Felsenstein introduced me to many statistical aspects of human genetics. I benefited greatly from the support of these two scientists. Early on, Arno sent me to meetings. He truly was and still is a model mentor. Much later, I was interviewed about my experiences with mentors and my view on my own role as a mentor. These interviews flowed into a book in which many pages are devoted to Arno Motulski. I think it was my experience with Arno that gave me a strong desire to be a good mentor for my own students. When I started working with Arno in the fall of 1972, linkage analysis was usually carried out in two generation or three generation families. But there was this large so-called Alaska kindred with many members exhibiting high cholesterol levels. In a previous paper, researchers around Arno, notably Joe Goldstein, 
had shown convincing evidence for a monogenic mode of inheritance in this family pedigree. However, despite various attempts, nobody had been able to find evidence for linkage. Fortunately, the Elson-Stewart algorithm had just been published, showing how to calculate likelihoods for genetic loci in large pedigrees. And Joe Felsenstein pointed out to me that this could be the basis for a linkage program. A year of planning and programming later, the LiPad program was born. Its application to the Alaska pedigree demonstrated weak evidence for linkage to the C3 polymorphism, which was later confirmed independently, for example, by Robert Elson's group. The gene responsible for this form of hypercholesterolemia later turned out to be the LDL receptor. The LiPad program proved to be an instant success because it was the only freely available software for linkage analysis in large pedigrees. LiPad formed the basis for many successful linkage analyses of well-known traits and was used as late as 1995, 20 years after its publication. I was involved only uh, uh, peripherally in uh, uh, political things. For example, when I con considered working with Dan Prusner on the gerson streusel syndrome, I was told that I should be very careful because his work was really uh, controversial. But I did continue working with him and it turned out this was a good thing to do. In the late 1970s, linkage analysis appeared, appeared to be losing some of its importance due to the upcoming methods for, of radiation hybrid mapping. For this and personal reasons, I accepted a civil service position in 1979 as the associate director of the Statistisches Amt der Stadt Zürich. Although this must have been a dream job for many people, I sorely missed science. Fortunately, I had enough free time to collaborate with science colleagues and to write the first edition of my textbook. Colleagues had urged me to extend the LiPad program to multipoint analysis, but I knew of such efforts by Mark Lesrop, although he was at the time only planning to develop a program for Mark Loci without regard to disease traits. That program was to be used to obtain an early human gene map based on the Ceph reference families. I convinced Mark to develop a regular disease trait linkage program, and this resulted in the linkage suite of programs still in use today. After I started working at Columbia University in 1986, Joe Tawilliger became my first student. We carried out much fruitful work together, and also with my other students at Columbia University. Now my former students are accomplished researchers in their own right. In the early 80s, we started offering linkage courses that were always well attended. In time, we were also teaching such courses in various other countries. I always enjoyed and still enjoy going to uh, meetings in, in different countries, so here we see uh, an example from a meeting in India. There is an, an early version of Newton Morton and Ranaji Chakrabodhi. At Columbia U University, I think my most important piece of work was uh, the analysis of the statistical properties of the haplotype relative risk method, which formed the basis for further developments, including that of the TTT by Spielman et al. Also, we developed a method for computer simulation in family pedigrees, which is still in use today. In 1996, I moved to Rockefeller University, which gave us three times more office space than I had before. Now we were able to host more visitors and colleagues spending their sabbaticals in my lab. Soon after my move, Josephine Ho entered my lab and brought with her fresh views and new ideas. 